We are back in the garden today. We've got two cherry trees, and they're going to be uh, reduced. I would like to retain um, retain their height because they're you know the nice tall trees. They're pretty much the um, since the ash trees um, got pollarded. They're pretty much the tallest points in the garden. I'm going to use my spiking pole for access. The initial plan is spike up the spiking pole. When I get to the top, chuck a a climbing line in the highest point of this tree and that will enable me to climb up um, the neighbouring tree without doing it any damage. There we are, all clipped in and I'm probably going to take it down to probably end up doing the final height about you know there but I do want to retain the height because um, there's some very cool views to be had up here. A good test of a, um, a tree surgeon's attention to detail um, is how he or she um, does a reduction. You always want to be doing what's best for the tree or what's best for the overall ecosystem. And you don't want to be leaving that a great pruning room until it'll eventually rot out. So with the cuts, I'm trying to follow the natural growth habit of the tree um, to retain its, uh, you know, a natural looking shape. And um, I'm gradually tapering the branch down. The laterals that you leave, you're basically promoting them to being the new leader of the branch. You look at how, how the branch is structured. It gradually tapers down. And there again, gradually tapers down. Now again, gradually tapers down. It's quite nice as I'm working right next door to a tree that I did two years ago. Silver birch behind me. I'm gonna have a good look at the um, the cuts and see how the um, you know, see how it's peeling. A way that you can um, prevent the problem of your branches snapping out. As you can see, I've got the two um, the lanyard, and I've got my climbing line, and they're supporting my weight in different areas of the tree. So my weight is spread between my two ropes and my feet, and that also reduces the amount of strain I put onto any particular branch and enables me to get out further without damaging the branch. Well, that's that whole clump finished. So I'll get a few, a bit of filming at different angles, a few photographs at different angles. We shall see what the final result looks like. This is an example of how I think a cherry tree should be pruned. Um, general rule of thumb for reductions is you take off no more than 30% of the leafy crown. Um, this ensures that the tree still has enough green left to carry on um, producing energy. Also if you cut two large branches off down to two small laterals, the laterals that you leave won't be able to support the branch and the large pruning would also introduce decay. If you're cutting a branch off at the trunk, um, essentially if you're doing a crown raise or something like that, or if you're thinning, you want to cut um, back to the branch collar to make sure the tree can heal correctly. I've got a quick shot here of the silver birch just to show you how um, a correctly done reduction um, enables you to maintain the, the natural shape and growth habit of the tree. 